everyone. Welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs. Here's one of them, <laughs> uh, Thea and our cat Tux. And yeah, I have uh, some time today so I wanted to um, catch you guys up on what I've been up to, the little that I've been up to. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, start with something that I was given recently. I got in the mail. Um, it's a little, I guess I would like to, well, I would like to just kind of do things as I feel today and not very structured, um, which is generally unlike me, but I want to start with something my dad gave me, um, which is wonderful and I really appreciate. I also, um, I guess I will talk about uh, my little holiday, um, my attempt at, at, at looking, you know, like I'm dressed for the holidays. I've got my bells with bows. These are some old earrings that um, were very inexpensive that I've had for, I don't know, a long time. And then I did a little braid, which shows off my lovely gray streak. <laughs> and um, yeah, a little red lipstick today, which is I don't always do. I did it yesterday, and this is, I should not even. I'm getting so sidetracked already. Yesterday, we went out and watched the new Star Wars movie. I should, like, put this at the end, but I told you, I'm just going to do do it as it comes today. So, um, we went and watched the new Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker. Um, he really wanted to see it. I just watch him. I watch them because he likes them, and um, I... Oh my gosh, I'm going to scare you guys. I <laughs> never watched Star Wars go growing up. Um, and I don't think I've seen the full uh, originals. Um, I, I've never really sat down and watched the whole thing. <laughs> but I like the new ones. Um, I'm, I'm like, some of you Star Wars fans out there are appalled, I know. Um, <laughs> but I like Ray and I like the new one and I really enjoyed this new movie and, um, parts of the, I, I won't of course give anything away in case you haven't seen it, but parts of the, um, the ending I did see coming and one part I, I did not see coming and I, I don't know, I guess I won't share that because it just came out. So, so yeah, <laughs> I guess I was saying I wore red lipstick yesterday out cause I just, wanted to dress up and, and feel nice and pretty. So I, <laughs> I wore this um, MAC lipstick, which is Ruby Woo, and I've had it, I think, a long time. <laughs> and I got it when, um, I think I was 25. <laughs> and um, I mean, somebody, I, I don't know, there's some debate about like when you should throw uh, makeup away and stuff, but I've worn that lipstick like probably five times. Um, and, uh, use a lip liner to, because it's such like a retro, very matte finish. This is not a makeup channel. I, I talk about knitting and spinning and crocheting and weaving sometimes when I weave and sewing. Um, I do have a skirt upstairs that I'm not going to talk about today. I'm going to wait until it's done and then just show it off when I actually manage to go to, get up there and finish it. So I put the lip liner on, which like helps it, um, it just, because it, because of the kind of lipstick it is, it just, it's a good idea to use the lip liner. And, and so we went out, um, and it lasts a long time. It's really great that way, but we went out to eat and then I had a lot of it had kind of come off and, and then, um, I didn't have, I didn't bring it with me. I left it at home. So there was no way for me to um, freshen it up. So I, we ended up doing some like grocery shopping before we came home. And um, I had, all I had left was like a smudge. I had like the lip liner and a smudge. And I know I looked ridiculous, but I was just, whatever. I was going to see nothing but strangers anyways, hopefully. <laughs> and I did, I didn't see anybody I knew. They're like, who's this crazy lady with red lip liner? <laughs> Um, so my lesson was to bring the lipstick with you so that you can freshen up. Oh my god. I rarely wear lipstick anymore, but once in a while I do. And it's usually more of a, um, uh, like a, 
creamy lipstick, not a very like matte, um, long lasting lipstick. But okay, there's my lipstick story that I didn't know I was going to tell you. So <laughs> completely changing gears. Let's talk about what I wanted to talk about first. And that is a gift that my dad sent me in the mail. And um, if you've been following me for a while, then you've heard me talk about my grandparents and how much they mean to me and my dad's parents. And um, there were times where they helped raise me. They certainly didn't raise me, but they helped raise me. And um, yeah, I have a lot of love for them and they both passed away this year. So um, my grandfather uh, was in the Navy when he was a younger man. And so when he passed away, oh, <laughs> you're getting the reflection of my upstairs um, and me in the screen. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can hold this at an angle. Oh, wow. Okay, lots of glare, but you can see I got this um, picture, uh, not picture frame, it's a flag. What is the formal name for this? It's a flag shadow box. Um, and, um, yeah, it, it's, I think, I haven't taken it apart yet, but I think I might be able to carefully take it out and flip it and maybe the, this is an American flag, of course, um, and the back side, I think, might have the red. I don't know. Excuse me. My dad um, and his siblings, I think each family, each ch um, child of my grandparents got one of these, and they each decided what to do with them, whether they were going to keep them, like my aunt and my uncles, or if they were going to give them to their children. And I am my dad's only child and he decided that he really wanted to give this to me and he is really embarrassingly um, adamant that um, about how much my grandparents loved me and um, that you know he thinks I should have this so um, anyway so this was um, a wonderful gift to get and it has a name plaque that I'm not going to share um, and after going to a, um, co uh, not a conference, it was a presentation that my school put on for my students about social media and the internet and safety. I was a little bit like scared <laughs> about the amount of information you can find on a person. Um, so I think all of this um, paranoid, like don't share too much information. I know other people share all their information not all of it, but a lot of it, and that's fine, and I'm not judging you at all, but I've always felt I should protect myself, and, and um, after seeing that presentation, I'm like, yep, I was right to do that, and I'm not totally paranoid. <laughs> so anyways, I there's a plaque that has his full name and um, uh, date of birth and the day he passed away, um, and when I opened that up, um, it definitely choked me up quite a bit. Um, so yeah. Um, I love this and I put it on my bookshelf. It still needs cleaning and I think at some point I'm going to carefully open it and maybe see if I can get the, um, the stripes instead of the stars. I like the stars, but I also, I don't know, I just kind of want to see what it looks like with the stripes. So then <clears throat> there's this um, photo that I just kind of sat next to it of my grandparents. Um, that's my grandpa and my grandmother, grandma. Um, I don't remember if I showed this before, but my grandma um, passed away first, which we were all shocked by, and um, that was the spring. And then I got to see my grandpa one more time this summer when my dad got married this summer. And then shortly after that, he passed away. So um, I kind of suspected that. So I thought I'd just share that little bit and the flag shadow box is a wonderful gift okay so I have some knitting to share and I'm having some peppermint tea today um, I have some knitting to share I have a new fleece um, I have a new book that I'm very excited about I have so a new cast on I have a sad amount of progress made on one project, and <laughs> um, 
yeah, I don't know. We'll just we'll just get to it as we get to it. I want to start off with my new book, which is um, this beauty right here. This is Selbu Mittens, and um, I um I, I hope I don't want to talk about it too much and go into great detail on it, or maybe you guys would like that. I don't know. I never know, but um, I. Um, know that a lot of people are buying this right now and that it is, as I think Claire from the Wooly Thistle might have said that it's selling like hotcakes. Unless I'm putting words in her mouth, I think she might have said that. But this is the brand new um, English translated Selbu Mittens book, which um, originally was called Selbu Vodder, and which means Selbu Mittens, and it was in Nor Norwegian. Um, and I have wanted this book for a long time, but I didn't want to buy it in a language that I couldn't read. Um, and you could absolutely, like, having looked through this, if you just wanted patterns, um, you could absolutely just buy it in, in Norwegian, but I'm glad that I waited because, um, I actually, I just for, I forgot and just remembered that when I was skimming through this book, um, I finally opened it, <laughs> um, and I was reading the stories from the patterns in the back. All have little stories that go along with them, and there was one in particular about um, a man's mittens and his wife uh, when they were betrothed. Betrothed um, made them for him and trying to find it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, I'll try not to show you the pattern side. I can help it. Okay, so this is the information history side of it. Um, these are the mittens that the lady made for her husband. This is um, three of them. The husband, their first child, and her. And if you read this story, I totally teared up right at the end. Um, I'll just say the last line. It says, these mittens were heavily worn and patched. And the story was basically that the wife died after having only two children with her husband. And, um, and then later, their youngest child also died. And so the father and the oldest son um, survived and lived on for many, many years. And when I read that, they had died and that the husband had kept the mittens and the, the mittens were heavily worn, you know, that, like, it's, without saying it, it says so much, you know. Um, it makes me teary even just, like, I'm such, oh my gosh, I'm such a, um, sap. <laughs> so, yeah, that was such a sweet, sweet little story. I'm not particularly drawn to making those mittens, um, but I love the story. So <clears throat> what I will talk about is um, if you're interested in this book, then uh, I think you should absolutely buy it. It is such a wonderful book. It has basic information on what Selbu mittens are. Say hi to Tux. That's Tux. <laughs> and um, talks about like the different characteristics. One thing that I learned is about the cuffs. And I didn't know that um, that there is sort of a gender um, specific cuff, sort of. Um, so the women's cuffs are either um, ribbed with kind of a lacy look, um, or they are um, yeah either ribbed or kind of this lacy look. And um, I will just kind of flash. Some of that right there. So a men's cuff would look like this. Um, I think I was pointing to the right one where it's um, just color work, um, little to no rib. Um, and women's cuffs might have had a chevron um, kind of um, either a lace or chevron or rib. And then the men's cuffs were. Um, just color work knitting. And I really want to know, was there a practical piece to that where um, 
the men's mittens needed to be more, um, you know, stronger and, and resist abrasion or something. You know, was there a reason for why men's cuffs didn't have ribbing or, um, or, yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then I, of course, looked through all of the different designs and patterns, and the book is broken up into kind of um, different areas. Uh, so there are some very typical patterns that you see, and it kind of talks about what they relate to or um, what they are supposed to represent or an area or family that they relate to. And so after looking through all of them, I particularly liked this section on um, the flywheel rose. And it's relating to, I think, let me just make sure, either a goat's horns um, or a butter churn. <laughs> Um, I'm not kidding. It's like, it's a flywheel rose and goat's horn rose. So this section has those two kind of themes and the goat, lovely picture of the goat there. Um, I find that, um, I don't put a lot of stock in, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, astrological signs, but I am a Capricorn and the Capricorn is... A sea goat. So I do um, feel a connection with the goat, I guess. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm just being silly. Um, so I looked through these and I particular, particular, particularly liked this section. Um, and that's very pretty right here to me. But that's not the one that I like the most. I really like, trying not to show you that side, I really like this mitten or glove rather that glove not the whole thing but parts of it so I kind of went through the whole section and then made myself a recipe for a glove that I would like to make so if you look at the cover of the book there are almost all mittens but I looked very very carefully and I found I think five stacks of gloves there's one two this one is really hard to see there's three one two three four I think there's another one somewhere there might be another one there's at least four pairs of gloves um, on this cover but the rest are all mittens four or five um, this flywheel rose so pretty um, Anyways, so I was very torn between this pattern right here, this kind of large rose floral pattern, and the um, sort of goat's horn one that I was just showing you. So, um, yeah, this is a goat's horn rose. And I thought it was more unique looking, but ever since I've been looking through this book, I'm seeing it everywhere now. And then somebody just shared, I think I saw on Instagram or something, somebody shared a photo of some 20-year-old mittens that they have, or gloves, and it had the same design on it. So <laughs> I was like, I guess it's not as unique as I thought it was. But um, So what I did, uh, and this is, I guess, I'll, the last thing I'll say before I move on. I have this graph paper that I found online and took a picture of and <laughs> then print out. I save it in my favorites on my phone so it's easy to find and then anytime I want to hand chart something I print it out and then on the back I made myself a recipe for kind of different sections um, and what I would like. So I started with the cuffs and I think that's the one thing that I'm the most sure of is the cuffs that I would like and I put what page number um, the cuffs are on so 182 has these cuffs right here which these are the knitted mitten um, these cuffs with lace and these um, very um, they're chevrons 
um, but they have this soft kind of flow to them. I think they're really pretty and I love the lace on them. So I definitely think I want to make have that be the cuff for sure. And then I was very torn between the flywheel rose um, or the goat's horn. And so I'm definitely heavily leaning goat's horn. My husband said he likes the flywheel rose better. They certainly are more feminine, but I just, I think something about the goat's horn speaks to me. Um, a, and I showed him, I don't know if I'll show you, I, I don't want to make this whole episode about this book, but um, I showed him there's a section with animals and there's moose and elk and reindeer and deer and things and um, I really am drawn to the moose. Very, very, very drawn to the moose. I love the moose. And he's like, nah, I just like the deer. And I knew that because he loves deer. Um, he's a hunter and he loves deer hunting. A lot of, a lot of people in this, in my area, um, and in Vermont in general are, it's a big, it's a big thing here. And, um, a lot of my students came in on the youth weekend talking about having gotten a deer, or if they don't get a deer, they're very, very, very upset. So, okay, sidetrack. At some point, he would like, um, I think, a pair of gloves with a deer um, across the hand. Um, so I said a simple sideband. So... Selva mittens all have a sideband and their um, various com complexity. <laughs> so they can be as simple as like a black stripe, a white stripe, a black stripe, or a black, white, black, or you, know, you get the idea. But they all have this very distinctive border typically that goes around the edge. And so I think I want a quite simple sideband, pretty um, basic Nothing too fancy, no like back and forth squiggles or anything. Um, the finger options. So this is where I listed out all of the different ones and I kind of sketched like, oh, there's this cute heart one and there's this nice um, kind of diamond shape pattern and there's little chevrons. And then since I'm doing gloves, I need the fingers to have a pattern or I want the fingers to have a pattern. And so I was looking at different patterns that I liked. And I like the chevrons, I like the hearts, the diamonds are okay. Um, the, the hearts I said too cute, question mark, like too cutesy. Um, and then when I found these, I was said, wow factor, love. I love, love, love these. So I think that's what I'll do on the fingers is this design here. And also probably on the thumb. I might hide in my initials or something, I don't know, who knows. Um, this is just kind of like a recipe for gloves that I might hopefully make in the future. Um, the palm patterns. So that's um, this side of the mitten. And um, I think that one, I, I'm leaning towards this complex um, design. Here's the back side. Something like this right here. A little bit more complex than, like this would be quite simple. Um, these are spitballs, and the picture of the spitballs uh, in here, it's a whole section with, my husband didn't believe me, I showed it to him, and it's, there's a photo of um, someone's spitted chewing tobacco in snow. I'm like, ew, yeah, I didn't need to see that. <laughs> so that's the spitball pattern, and there's quite a few of them. Anyways, I like this pattern, but, or, and this one, but I don't know, and that one. <laughs> But I don't know, um, this is, um, have to do, this has to do with heaven, um, and it's very pretty, but I just don't love it. I love these, that's why I'm here. I love these. And despite being more complicated, and probably meaning it's going to take longer to knit, and it means that the backside won't be as nice and, you know, oh, I can just knit the backside without thinking. I'll have to think, um, and make sure I'm following my chart carefully. So, I don't know. Um, and then the thumb design, same as the fingers, and yeah, that's it. So that's kind of my recipe. Um, I really just sectioned off the big different areas. You know, you want to know what you want for the cuff, 
you want to know what you want for your design on the palm, which is kind of really one of the main features. If you're doing gloves, the fingers and thumb, and then the palm side, do you want a more like plain checkered look or do you want something fancy? So that's what I did. I kind of listed all of the things that I liked and then circled or highlighted or crossed out as I found something I liked better or decided for sure which thing I wanted. Um, so at some point, I think I'm going to do the uh, make these gloves. And I love my um, Latvian mittens that I made so much. Um, I made some hand spun Cory Dale Latvian mittens and I wear them. It's winter time right now, obviously. And um, if you couldn't tell by my Christmas tree, <laughs> happy holidays. And if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, I love my mitten, but I think it would be nice to have a pair of gloves. So um, I think that's what I'm going to try and plan for. Uh, and I, this <laughs> has, um, I kind of have gone back and forth. I almost used this um, jam, jam plan wool from Sweden, and I almost used some um, of Weezer's yarn from uh, from um, Carrie, my wool mitten, um, her farm. Um, but long story short, it just didn't work out, and. I thought about sharing the story of like I made this alpaca blend and then decided that was a terrible idea why did I do that and so all of that lovely dark chocolate um, Corydale I blended with alpaca and it just did not work the blend looks terrible um, it's got like neps and oils all over the place and I tried spinning it and it just wasn't pleasant and then I felt horrible that I ruined this wool. I don't know. I think it's savable, but it's just, I just had to put it aside. So, um, anyway, so what I did was I went upstairs and pulled out my, one of my Shetland fleeces. I have a ton of Shetland wool from my Shetland color work project, which I haven't done. I haven't put any work on at all. So I'm, I will not be showing it today. I'm sorry. I know at least maybe a couple of you would like to see, but there's not enough progress to bother showing. I'm still stuck at the gussets and I'm starting to debate whether or not I really want to do gussets and maybe I should do like a shaping instead. Maybe I should shape for the shoulder and have a more traditional, no, uh, a more modern fit. Um, and then you wouldn't have this this kind of folding situation which happens with gussets or dropped shoulders. Um, I'm, or maybe I'm just being too picky. But let's get back to the gloves. So I have a ton and ton of ton of Shetland wool and I will probably buy some more come February um, from my favorite Shetland um, farmer in New Hampshire. <laughs> I would really, instead of buying um, a fleece, I would really love to buy some of her lambs instead. Um, but so far we are, you know, not getting sheep yet. Maybe one day. I just, um, I just need to like sneak some fencing home one day and start putting that up. <laughs> um, okay, so this is Nala. It's from white uh, to gray, um, light gray to dark gray. It's in my Shetland Colorwork project. This is some leftover. I have quite a bit of gray left um, that's shorter. And the majority of what I used for my cardigan that I'm designing was the nicest stuff that I could pull out. Um, this is from the edges and it's um, a little bit coarser. It's not very coarse by any means, but um, it's certainly got a higher micron count than um, what I used for my cardigan. And I dyed a ton of this um, really, really hot pink. I think I called the episode, it says something about troll hair, and I still have all of that to comb and process, um, and maybe one day make something with. Um, so this is some of the white that I could find that I had left. I was worried I didn't have any left, but I did. I have, I think, just enough to comb and make these gloves. 
and I want to do a very traditional looking mitten. So I also got out some of this black Shetland, which is gumdrop, and Nala and gumdrop have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wool. Um, and just like, oh, that section right there. So pretty. You can't even see because it's so dark. This, um, to me, is actually a true black. And it could be that it's a, a very, 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 very dark brown. But, you know, I've seen, like, the, the <clears throat> Jameson's, Jameson and Smith's black, which is just a, a dark brown. This is much darker than that, and it does come off as a true black. Um, unless maybe you hold it up against something that's black. It does look um, black, very, very black. So I'm going to do traditional. Um, that's not a great lock, but it's okay. I'm going to do traditional colors with the mittens, and I think I'm going to really love and appreciate them. And I'm going to do them with fine yarn and fine, fine needles, and they're probably going to take ages to knit. And I've never made gloves before, but at some point, um, I really think this will be a wonderful project. And it's very um, inspiring to me. And I love challenges. I love doing new things, learning new things. So um, I, I'm just going to adjust because the sunlight is, excuse me, is coming through that window. Maybe I need to go this way. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So what else to talk about? Um, I guess I could talk about some of my new, should I do knitting first? Um, I don't know if you can see, I have all of this. I'm not sitting in my normal location. Um, I'm facing like the opposite direction. Over here is <laughs> all of my stuff on my couch that I'm going to talk about. And there is Tux snuggling in all of the wool and things that I brought over to talk about being very cute. Hey buddy. <laughs> um, and I, I'll just pan and show you the top of my tree with my tin foil star that my dad and I made when I was three years old. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I'll show you, <laughs> oops, I'll show you this, which I won't talk about um, hardly at all because I checked my, I had to look, go back and look at what I talked about and what I had done and hadn't done in my last, um, in my last episode. And wow, did I talk a lot about this, um, cardigan. This is the host cardigan, which means fall in Norwegian, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and it's a relatively new design, excuse me, by Ellie uh, Skander Knits. And um, the last time I had uh, tried this on, I looked very silly. Um, and I think I had knit maybe here-ish. So I have just put on just a teeny bit on the sleeve, barely enough to, um, to bother showing off. But I have been, I just haven't had the desire to knit sleeves. And that is the case for a lot of my sweaters. I have, I realized... Ooh, I got some wool parts in my tea. Some little vegetable matter. Um, I think I have five um, ongoing, like, I'm actually, I've put um, some effort on uh, relatively recently. Five cardigan slash sweaters um, that are current projects-ish. Six, if you count one that's been in a zippered tote, and I've barely touched um, in a long time. So, anyways, hopefully I will find some um, desire to finish this sleeve and um, join the new one, because I do think I will love this. And if I don't get it done soon, then I'm not going to wear it until next fall, because um, when spring rolls around, I'm just not going to want to wear burnt orange, you know? So that's my host card again, and I guess I show you my socks that I was wanting to knit for my um, for Christmas for my husband, but they're not going to be Christmas presents because you need two socks, and <laughs> I only have one, 
and it's not even done. So um, these are um, Hair Effect, and I found the label. Last time I talked about these, I didn't have the label. So here's the label. And yeah, they're Arnie and Carlos Perfect. Um, okay, interruption after interruption. My husband called, and then um, I said, you know, he wanted to see if I wanted anything, and so I said yes. And and then I started talking about these socks again, and then I got another phone call, and I was just like, I'm just gonna re-record this whole section. And then I put my phone on airplane mode. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I wanted to point out two things. This sock has biased quite a bit. So, um, what I did was I kind of just showed, you know, if this is 90 degrees, you know, if I'm holding this straight up and down, can you see how this, this, these lines of the ribbing are going off, um, are skewing? And, and if it wasn't for this heel, I would have worried actually about the fit. I think it'll be okay because once you put the sock on, you can twist it a little bit. Um, but they are skewing a lot. But um, I think the heel flapping gusset really helped. And um, I've been really enjoying the heel flapping gusset. Like a lot of people in the knitting community, I feel like the swing has gone back to heel flapping gusset lately. Um, the pattern that I'm using, is this um, from, um, it's the basic ribbed sock out of a book by Kate Atherley. Um, and um, I'm making the largest size. <laughs> so these socks do seem like they are taking a long time to knit because they are um, large. <laughs> <laughs> and then I almost forgot, I was going to say like, oh, I only have one more knitting thing to talk about. So I'm going to save my newest knitting um, for last. And I will talk about this, which is also for you guys brand new. You haven't heard about it. Well, the knitting part of it. You've heard about the spinning part of it. Um, I am, I don't think I have the pattern over here. That's okay. I am knitting the um, Shetland Hap. <laughs> now I'm going to question um, what this is called. It's not the Shetland Hap. Jeez. Uh, this is, um, I know it's from the Shetland Trader. And um, oh my God, I have to go find that pattern. Okay, so this is um, the shawl that I'm making. And in this photo, it's being used as a baby blanket, but it's a shawl can also be used as a baby blanket. Um, so it's the Hansel Hap, and Hap and meaning shawl. Um, so I decided to just cast it on. I just wanted to cast it on a while ago, and I actually, I was talking to you guys about the Star Wars movie. I was, I tempted some movie theater knitting, and um, I, it was okay. There were a couple of yarn overs with a slip stitch, which is the best mistake that you can make because all you have to do is use that yarn over to knit the slip, slip stitch. I can't talk today. And, um, and then, no mistake, it's the easiest mistake you can make. It's the best mistake because no one will ever know that you made it. Versus like a yarn over um, and the stitches on both sides are knit. Then you just have a yarn over and you can drop it, which means you'll have those two stitches on either side will become loose, looser than the rest of your gauge. Um, but anyways, and then, so after attempting to knit one round, I decided not worth the risk. I don't know how people do it. Um, I, it was fun to try for a little bit, but I mean, cause this is really very plain knitting. It's just, um, at the beginning there's, um, <clears throat> some special, you know, um, instructions, but then the rest of it is just knit. So, um, yeah, I cast on this, um, hap with my hand spun Cory Dale from, um, Hilda, um, the fleece that I purchased from Carrie of my wool mitten. And, um, basically you knit, you're knitting 
Did I show this to you guys? I feel like I haven't shown this to you at all. Am I? I hope I'm not mistaken, and I did, in fact. Maybe I was just talking about it on Instagram. Ugh, I don't know. This is why I had to go back and look and see what I had talked about. You start um, here. Right here is where you start. So you're knitting from the point up, kind of creating this triangular shape, and then you start decreasing. So you're increasing on this, and then you start decreasing, and that creates your square. So it's garter stitch. It's really lovely and squishy and so wonderful. Um, I'm getting close, um, coming down, um, down the mountain, I guess, <laughs> for the, uh, the, the amount of knitting on the middle section. Um, and I still have quite a bit of yarn, which is what I wanted to know was um, how far this would get me and whether or not how much of the rest of the wool that I drum carded to spin I'll actually need and I'm not going to get into the details of there's some um, issues happening with or my fault about leaving lanolin in the wool and which makes for a lovely yarn but um, it's set the, the lanolin has set and hardened uh, in the bat that I haven't spun and it's nearly impossible to spin um, so I'm going to have to boil water and try and um, soak that bat carefully um, in order to get it to be spinnable again. So I wanted to know how far, I guess I, I, I explained it well enough, I guess, um, how far this will get me and how much of that bat I will actually need um, for the rest of this cap. Um, I do really enjoy this. I've been really loving it. If you see this photo here, this gray section is what I'm knitting right now. And then the second sort of part of this pattern is this um, wavy border. And that has a particular name in Shetland. It's not the print and wave. It's, it's not the cockle shell. It's, they have um, the pattern name for this. I, I forget what it is. Um, and then at the end, there's just an added little um, triangular border that you knit you knit on at the very end. So um, I'm probably going to need more of this, but um, I, this one skein has gotten me quite a bit further than I think I thought it would. Um, it's quite fine. Um, the yarn is quite fine. And being Corydale and a finer, finer Corydale, um, the, the, the yarn does go a long way because it has a finer micron count. I'm not going to get into that, why that is, but I should talk about it with my Lincoln fleece. <laughs> um, okay, so last, last thing for knitting. Um, I was coming home from a conference um, um, for uh, math teachers, and I really, it was my first, um, you know, big conference like that, and it was so it's actually really fun. I really enjoyed it and um, the lady was going like a mile a minute and she was spitting out so much like awesome information that I was just trying to write it all down. I, I don't know I guess maybe part of me was skeptical about how because <laughs> I shouldn't get into this sometimes um, like these kind of things can be very helpful and useful and, and you're you know you're so happy to be getting this information and sometimes there are these events where teachers have to sit like all day and just feel like they're getting absolutely nothing from this information or, or whatever the activity is or um, I'm not going to get into that. This was very useful. I'm very glad that I signed up for it and I learned a lot of things and I've got some tips and techniques and things that I'm going to try and use. So um, what I did was after the conference I did a little bit of shopping. Um, I got some um, a Christmas present for my husband, and then I was like, ooh, I'm going to be driving by Must Love Yarn, which is just south of Burlington, Vermont. And I thought, I don't know how I can drive by without stopping in, so I decided I'm going to stop in. And it was kind of late, um, and I walked through, and um, they have quite a mix. They have some more, like, commercial yarns. They have... Um, local um, 
candy dyed stuff and then they have farm more farm yarns and that tends to be where I gravitate towards is the farm yarns um, at least for the past year or more if I'm gonna buy yarn I tend to um, value farm yarns a little bit more um, I just I I like that they have a story and a place and sometimes I like that they are very breed specific um, yeah, and I like supporting small farms and businesses. So this is, she's very well known. This is from Tammy of Wing and a Prayer Farm. She lives in Shaftesbury, Vermont. And, um, which it's, it's not terribly close to me, but it's, it's drivable. Um, and, um, I saw her at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, which was in October, right? Um, and I didn't buy any of her yarn. I bought some of her soap, um, but I just didn't um, connect with any of her yarn at that time. Um, but when I was at the Muscle of Yarn, <clears throat> I came across this, which is Thelma and Louise, and I think possibly one of her most popular yarns. I, I could be completely wrong on that, but... Um, I was looking through patterns that are have been tagged um, as using her yarn, and I found a lot of projects with Thelma and Louise um, yarn. So what it is is it's a mix of um, Teeswater, Winsleydale, Cotswold, and Cormo. The Cormo is a little bit, um, probably to soften it up quite a bit, and then 50% of it is mohair. So 50% of it is mohair. The rest is the mix of the Teeswater, Wensleydale, Cotswold, and Cormo. Um, you can definitely tell that it has a lot of mohair in it, um, or I can. Um, the shine and the feel of it, the silkiness. I love mohair for that reason. The, the silky feel of mohair is really wonderful. I know some people can't use mohair and... Um, that's unfortunate. I really, really love it. Um, besides the little flyaway bits that like to get everywhere, especially in your eyes or your face. But um, it's a wonderful fiber. And then you can't really, you can almost really can't tell that it has, you know, these um, long, uh, long wools in them that have higher microns because it feels so wonderful. Um, and I think that probably has to do with the amount of mohair, the little bit of, I'm picking out some vegetable matter. I'm picking it out as I see it. Um, and then, and that's how you know it came from the farm. <laughs> um, and small farm yarns. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't feel like Teeswater and Winsleydale in Cotswold um, when you feel it. Um, and yeah, I think that it's, it's got a very soft ply to it. It's been softly spun and softly plied. I'm going to guess that she spins this at Battenkill, which is a um, New York. Because I know she uses a couple different spinneries. And one, the Green Mountain spinnery is more for, it's not really for long wools as much as I think Battenkill is a worsted versus Green Mountain spinnery, which is a woolen mill. And then... Bat and Kill is more for long wools. They're better, their machinery is better suited for long wools. So I really could not say no to this. And it's a pricey yarn. Her yarns are pricey and I think worth it if you have it within your budget to support her and her farm. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful squishy yarn. I can't stop feeling it. So not only did I buy two of her skeins, then I decided... Um, I loved it so much that I wanted to knit, <laughs> knit something with it, and I wanted to play with it right away. And so I was looking at my um, my favorites. I use favorites on Ravelry more than I use Q. Um, and this is one that I've had in my favorites. Um, it's called Soferl, and I don't know. It's a play on Sophie. It's supposed to be an affectionate form of Sophie, which... I don't understand because I don't think that's it's not an American thing. Um, but Soferl is sort of a play on Sophie. And 
I, it's a DK weight pattern or worsted weight pattern. I don't remember, but this is a DK weight yarn and it's, it's quite a heavy DK weight. So I knew like I could probably get away with DK or worsted. Um, but I love these cables. I just, I love these cables. Uh, and this green color too. I'm not using green, but I have like had this in my pattern, um, in my favorites for a while. And yeah, just kind of thinking about like what would be the best yarn for it and what I maybe do like some hand spun yarn for it, but that hasn't come up. So, um, this seemed to fit, um, really well with it and I'll show you what I've knit so far. So <laughs> this is the back side and hold on. Um, this is the back side and this right here is this center, um, ridge, which she has you knit in the pattern. Um, the center back has this just column of purl stitches. Um, just a visual interest. I thought about omitting it. Um, I wasn't in love with, uh, with that, that feature, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know, it'll add a cute little element to the back, um, and, sit and break up the, you know, miles of boring stockinette for the back of the cardigan. Cause the back is other than that, it's just stockinette. The front is the only part that has the cable panels. So she has you knit these little short row, um, sort of, uh, triangular sections right here. And you actually cut, um, your yarn, you do one of them and then you cut off your yarn and then hold them. I held them on a DPN. This is my lab getting some water, my dog. And then this side you do, and then you cast on the middle section and then you join them. Um, so this was, um, yeah, pretty easy to do. I questioned why you had to cut it. I felt like there's got to be a way to get around cutting it. Um, you know, you just do this little triangular piece and then you have to cut it. It seemed um, like there's got to be a better way than that, but this has such a wonderful halo. I'm so distracted. But anyways, this is the back, the back of it. Um, and I don't have too much done on it and um, it is knitting up pretty quick. These are size seven, US seven, 4.5 millimeters. Um, so yeah, I am really, really motivated to get to the part where I get to um, unit enough, I think probably here-ish, about to the point where you start shaping and then you pick up here and then knit down and then shape and then join and then knit the body. Um, I've been tempted to just add in some steaks, but I'm afraid that this yarn would be very poor for steaking due to the mohair and its silkiness. So, um, trying to get rid of that glare. So yeah, anyways, I will talk about, I'll talk more about this as, um, it develops and, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I just think so pretty. Um, okay. So, Okay, I have some spinning to talk about. This is a blend of Corydale that I bought at Rhinebeck two years ago, three years ago. My first Rhinebeck. Um, and this is some of that blended with mohair that I purchased here in Vermont. Um, I already combed. And then some um, Angora Bunny. Um, fur that I purchased um, at um, Six Loose Ladies in Chester, Vermont. It's a little shop run by six um, ladies who who um, came together to form this this yarn shop and um, each volunteer their time and share the load of having this business. And their name is Six Loose Ladies, so it's funny. Um, and there's nothing I can do about this light. Oh. I just block it out with my head. <laughs> so sorry. So um, this yarn is um, a blend of that. And I have all of the details, I think, on my Ravelry hand spun page if you're a spinner and you're interested in the details. I'll just let you go look it up rather than 
than um, explaining it right now because I don't have my information over here anyways and I'm trying to hurry up before my husband gets home um, so I can finish this up and um, so yeah I wanted to share oh, okay so this is this little sock that um, I just had to do something with my new um, Pluto Lopi yarn that I talked about last time and my new book so what I did was just this design that I really loved I just wanted to knit something with it and I thought I'd make like a little coffee cozy. Um, but what I ended up doing <laughs> was turning it into a sock. Just kind of impromptu, no pattern. Um, I ended up looking at, um, I think, my Fish Lips Kiss pattern just to remember a couple of details that I had forgotten. But other than that, the rest I just did, um, you know, straight out of here. So... And I added this cute little tab, which I'll show you. I knit flat for a little bit, <clears throat> and then I did um, an I-cord. I just went straight into an I-cord. And then I knit flat again, and then I just sewed those together onto the cuff of the sock. And I hung this up as my one of my dog's um, Christmas stockings. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute. Um... See, oh, I made this for my friend, and I'm a horrible friend because I didn't ship it out to her in time. Um, I talked about this a lot on Instagram, my stories. Um, I wanted to design a little Christmas ball for my friend and her new baby. So um, my friend had a baby, her second daughter, um, her second child and her second daughter. Um, and this one looks like her, her first daughter looked like her husband. So... Autumn Rain, it's her middle name, Autumn Rain, and then the year that she was born, she was born this year, so little baby, so sweet, and I'm a terrible friend because I did not get this shipped out in time for Christmas. Uh, um, I just designed it myself, I charted it out, and then made some totally, really s silly mistakes, and um, fixed them, and then... Um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun to challenge myself to just knit this. It does. It's not very attractive here on this edge. And um, next time I will try to try to do better. But I think it's really adorable considering I made up the pattern myself, and um, it's all made with some different hand spun. Um, this off white is Shetland. This chocolate is Ronald Dale. This is some dyed white Shetland pink and then this I cord is if you can tell it's slightly different color than the body is from my new fen fleece it's a teeny tiny sample that I made and I did a little I cord for a chunky little handle I think it's cute not perfect but it's pretty cute um, I could tell you that I'll just pan over right there that pile right there Oop, there my cute kitty. My, that pile um, is all Rommeldale that I have been spinning on my new spinning wheel. I don't know how long it's going to be my new spinning wheel, but it's still my new spinning wheel, my um, Shacked Reeves. And, oh, I didn't even tell you. It's okay. Um, this is the latest color that I spun and plied um, for this pile of Rommeldale that I've got going on over here, um, except for this. This is not Rommeldale. This is um, Corydale. This is Weezer. And this is going to go in the hat that I was showing you. Um, so at some point later on down the road, this is going to be mixed with um, this color for some striping um, in the border. Uh, what I had forgotten that I was going to tell you that I just realized is that I'm spinning these on my new spinning wheel and this is the fastest speed that I have at least currently and these are spun at 30.5 to 1 ratio which I was so afraid that it was going to be too fast and I wouldn't be able to keep up with it but it's actually been really fun and I think I'm gonna have some very fine yarn and the plan is to make socks with these I'm so I'm like 
so bad um, at explaining what I'm doing right now. Those are supposed to be for socks. Um, with, they have Cordale and Mohair and Angora, and I think they're going to make a traditional three-ply um, sock yarn. And um, yeah, they're being spun at 30.5 to 1, which is so cool to, um, to be able to do that. So yeah, okay. I think I'm really done with those at this time. All right, really the last thing, because I don't think I have time, any more time anyways. This is, whoo, stinky. <laughs> this is my new um, Lincoln fleece that I purchased. Um, this is Beth, and, and my dog's going to come over to sniff it. This is Beth, and it's my first Lincoln fleece. Lincoln is known for being coarse um, or strong, depending how you want to look at it. It's not known for being sweater fabric um, or next to skin fabric. Um, some people describe it as carpet wool. <laughs> um, my plan is to um, um, try and turn it into um, something wonderful and usable that is not a carpet. Um, I think I'm going to try and make a shawl, a really beautiful, hopefully drapey, um, shiny shawl. Um, getting the shine to come out in this when you're spinning is actually proving to be really hard. It seems this is so gross. Um, it's, it's a really dirty fleece. Quite smelly. Um, and there are lots and lots of burrs in this um, that are really prickly and painful. I was actually stabbed by this really long needle thing that I found in here to the point where I'm thinking that w when I go to process clean the rest of this. I might need to wear gloves. Um, the little burrs got stuck in my finger and then on my pants and then I had to um, go and wash my pants. I'm not going to play with this too much more because it does, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to wear gloves to finish processing some of that. Um, but I'll show you the stuff that I've already washed and um, sorted a little and combed a little. And the new and exciting thing that I'm trying, not really all that exciting, but is combing milk and it smells nice because I put some peppermint oil in here. Um, all it is is water and unicorn, you know, you're probably, if you, if you are into fleeces, you're probably familiar with unicorn power scour. It's used for washing wool. Um, and they're, uh, they also have fiber rinse, which is like a fabric softener. And I bought their Beyond Soft, which is supposed to be unscented. It still has a scent, um, but it doesn't have like a perfume scent. So I added drops of peppermint oil into it. This is a little bit of the Lincoln that I combed with the um, with the combing milk, the combing spray, combing milk. And I think this one I did not, um, and it feels different. This feels. Um, and it, it's a little less wiry and kind of all over the place. Um, the, the locks that I combed with the spray seem to be a little bit more straight and aligned and kind of behaving. <laughs> um, here's another little dark section that I did that no spray. Um, this is the first little teeny sample that I spun um, of that darker. It's fine. It looks very like it's got a lot of halo. It's got way too much twist in it for Lincoln, but it was just a teeny sample to play with. And then this is a little teeny thing that I knit. I don't tend to do large samples. I think I can get a good idea about what, I, what I've got going on with a little teeny sample. So just a lock or two, honestly, um, is enough to spin up a little sample and maybe knit up a little something. So here's a little sample that I knit. This isn't bad, but it's um, I wanted um, a softer spin and a softer ply, <clears throat> hopefully to get a more silky feeling yarn. Um, although it does, it's got lovely um, stitch definition, and it looks like it would be great for lace, doesn't it? So that was one sample. The second sample was with the stuff that I had used the combing milk on. And the first one I did was this one, this little circular, because I the idea is that I 
would like to do a circular shawl, a full pie shawl. It's actually a two pie shawl. Math nerd. I'm not going to get into it. I take half of it as pie and then another half as two pie for a, um, a unit, unit circle. Um, <laughs> it takes me back to my um, um, memorizing the unit circle in high school and um, I had like, I was quizzed on it and I had to know all of the degrees and radians and um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I still have it somewhere. I have a hundred on it. <laughs> um, dork, sorry. So this is a, a little circular sample and um, I like it, but I don't love it. So um, I think my original idea was that I did want to do a two ply. Uh, I just, I don't know why, I just felt like I didn't want to do a single. But now I'm thinking I'm definitely going to sample um, single, some singles yarn. Here's another sample that I knit, and I knit it specifically in this shape so that I could test out its um, scratchiness by wearing it as a, like a little cuff or something. And um, Lincolns are known for having a very high micron count. In fact, I think the American Breed Association, they're not allowed to have under a certain micron count. Um, so they are supposed to have a high micron count, which means that they are typically, by most people, um, considered scratchy. It's a lot more like hair. It's a whole lot more like hair than it is like um, like human hair, than it is like wool. Um, it, it feels thicker and coarser. So I made this little almost bracelet. It's a bit too big to wear down here, but just to see if I could, you know, watch some TV or knit or something and have this on, and if it bothers me terribly. Um, it doesn't really bother me terribly. I don't think I'll be making a sweater out of it um, because that would, I'm sure that would be quite scratchy. It would make a nice outer garment um, and I think it will be just fine for a shawl. So the next thing I'm going to try is doing a singles yarn and roughly a lace weight, maybe a, um, a fingering weight. Um, spin a single oh and I'm spinning it worsted which I never spin worsted anymore I love spinning supported long draw short backward draw long draw when I first started out I did a ton of worsted spinning and now I do mostly um, short backward or supported long draw like short forward draw um, worsted spinning I hardly do anymore um, so, but that's what I've been doing for this because since this is coarser, it's a long wool, I would like a worsted spun yarn to try and keep all of these little fibers um, in alignment and as nicely um, smoothed as possible. Okay, um, hubby's home. So... I am going to enjoy the lunch that he brought me so very sweetly and clean up all of this mess. But before I sign off, um, I just was, I wanted to finish up my thoughts on my new fleece and show you, actually give you a better view of this um, wool in the lock form. Some of the really pretty colors. <clears throat> my first idea when I purchased this fleece was to make a um, blanket. Um, a nice, I found some pretty patterns for um, like blankets, knitted blankets, not crocheted afghans. I've made crochet afghans in the past, I've never really made a knitted blanket. Um, when I was younger, actually middle school age, I, um, I made my first crochet project was an afghan. Um, but anyways, um, I decided that due to the um, very kind of large and somewhat drastic range of colors in this fleece that um, I don't think I want to um, do a blanket because the original blanket that I had in mind uh, would be you know one solid color and and I'm the queen of um, loving color work and loving having fleeces with a range of colors because then it's like 
I'm getting, um, like I have, um, like a painter's, um, and I'm just, I've been given all of these colors to play with, but, um, to, to paint with as it were. But <clears throat> originally I thought I actually wanted mostly a solid overall color for a pretty uniform, um, blanket where the, the focus would be on the texture of, of the garment or not the garment of the, um, of the blanket. <laughs> so, um, there would be some cables and some pearl bumps and the texture would be the focus, not the color. But I just decided that this fleece really didn't work um, for that original plan. Um, so I sorted out a lot of the light to medium colors. Um, they're still uh, in that bag that I showed earlier. There's still a lot of darker colors in there. And here I've got a lot of the kind of light, lighter, medium colors. Um, and it's just these locks are so wonderful. And the curl and the shine, they're so pretty. But keeping that um, when you spin it is difficult. And I've looked around on Ravelry for um, advice and things. And there's not a lot that I could find. The advice that I did find... Um, use a combing milk. So this is my first time using a combing milk ever. And I think it does help. Um, and I'm definitely glad I'm using it and I will continue to use it, I think. <laughs> um, the other advice is to spin worsted um, to help tame those um, little fibers from going everywhere. Um, and to use a short forward draw is the best worsted spinning you can do. You can do a short backward draw, but it's not as doesn't um, do as good a job as short forward does and um, maybe there are some other things I'm not thinking of spin it on I think spinning it on a lower ratio is important and plying it on a low ratio is important um, but yeah so I think what I'm going to do is possibly spin for a shawl and have um, just a really lovely soft gray shawl that will kind of go with anything and everything. And the focus will really be on the texture again, on this drape and the shine and um, the lace knitting um, and less on the color. So it's a little um, different than what I typically do. Um, and I'm uh, very intrigued and, and um, I love the challenge of doing this kind of thing, learning something new and pushing my skills to a new, um, new level. So that's it for today. Um, thank you guys so much for stopping in and for visiting with me. Um, I'm so excited um, that uh, I've just barely, just just teeny tiny, you know, barely crossed the threshold of a thousand subscribers. And um, I never did this for the subscription, um, for su the subscriber part of this. Um, or, or to have a lot of followers or anything. That's never why I did this. I did this for the community and the connection and to have people to talk to about the things that I love because there just aren't any in my day-to-day -day life. They, they do not understand the love and obsession that I have with knitting and spinning and wool and crafts and all the things. Um, I try sharing it with my, my, my kids, my students. Um, and I'm dry, I'm getting some of them. I'm slowly luring some of them <laughs> into this <laughs> into this world of mine. I've got a couple of them knitting um, and stuff, so it's been fun. All right, and making bracelets because they love they most of them already know how to make bracelets, like friendship bracelets and stuff. So <laughs> thank you guys. Um, I just wanted to. Um, say that I really appreciate all of you guys for coming back every time and for um, the comments and the support and the love that you guys have shown me throughout this journey that I've been on. Um, yeah, so I'll see you next time since this is the holiday season and I have this lovely break. I might get to do one more before I go back to school. I can't promise, but maybe after Christmas I might be getting some fibery goodness fiber tool maybe I'm hoping crossing my fingers I asked uh, 
my husband for for something um, spinning related, uh, not a wheel, but like tool prep kind of thing. So we'll see. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. See you later.